Hi, this is Ashit Goyal from BIMS of Education. In this tutorial, we learn about developing a preliminary architectural design for a house and start creating floor plans in Revit. This is the second part of the two series lesson on building up floor plans. You can find a link for the first part in the information box on top right of this video. This tutorial is part of the Revit Architecture for Students course available at BIMSERV Education. Join the course for downloadable resources such as templates, assignments and live instructor-led sessions. On completing the course, you get a downloadable certificate of completion. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit the red subscribe button for new videos every day. Let us first review the project and its requirements. Here in this slide, we see the basic project information. We will be using this information in the project in a later session. The second slide shows the overall requirements along with the room sizes. We will start the project by developing the ground floor. Here we see that all spaces that are needed to develop the ground floor. Let's open the exercise file preliminary design creating flow plan using walls.rvt. Let's verify if the view orientation is set to project north. If it is not, it needs to be set to project north for our work. We had set the project north and the survey points in a previous video. You can find the link for this video in the information box on top right corner of the screen. For now, type out VG on my keyboard to display visibility graphics and then turn off the inserted CAD topo plan. I'll zoom in closer to the two walls that I had drawn in my previous lesson. I'll verify the properties of these walls. The top and the base constraints are ground and first floors and both offset values are zero. The room morning checkbox is checked. We'll learn about the wall proper properties later on. As I scroll down further, I also get to see other properties. One of them is another checkbox that says structural. If this box is checked, the wall turns into a structural wall. We'll learn more about structural walls in a later video on the series on Revit structure. Let's scroll down a little further. We see dimensional properties of this wall. They report length, area and volume. I'll create the children's bedroom first. I already have the two walls and I need to add two more. I'll create these additional walls. The room dimensions that I need are 4.9 meters by 3.7 meters. I'll select this existing wall and then use the right click button on my mouse and it starts with the menu and select 
create similar option in this menu. Draw a horizontal wall here. Notice the position where I am drawing is a random cell and is random and is at no particular distance from any existing wall. I'll use the dimension tool and this time I'll use the option wall faces from the options bar drop down. This allows me to pick wall faces for dimensioning instead of wall center, which is the default wa value. I'll draw this vertical dimension. Hit the modify button to exit the dimension command. Now, I'll select the horizontal wall that I drew just now. Note that when I selected this wall, the dimension text becomes blue. This indicates that this value can be changed. I'll change this value to 16 feet. Note that in Revit, I can use any units other than the default units. When I am adding any dimensional value, Revit will automatically convert this value to the project units. Notice also the selected wall now moves up after I have changed the dimension. I'll round off the value to 4.9 M. I'll now model the vertical wall. I'll use a method similar to the one that I used just now for the horizontal wall. I'll now draw a horizontal dimension for the room width. Notice Revit has remembered my dimension placement setting and I don't need to change this if I want similar settings. I place the horizontal dimension between the two vertical walls here. Note. Now I am changing the dimension settings from wall faces to faces of the core. I have done this because as per my office standards, my dimensions need to be from core faces and not the finish faces. So the room dimensions 3.7 meters by 4.9 meters are dimensions from wall cores and not the finish. So I'll draw another horizontal line this time and select the wall cores or faces of the core. Again, hit the escape button and then pick the new vertical wall to change the horizontal dimension to 3.7 meters. I have selected the new wall. This is because I do not want my existing vertical wall to move when I change the dimension. So remember, when changing dimension value, select the element that you do not mind moving. I change the value to 3700 without using any unit symbol. I did this because my project units have been set to millimeters. I'll delete this dimension that was between the wall faces. I'll now modify the vertical dimension. Notice I'll change the witness line only and not delete the dimension, which I did earlier. As I zoom in, and select the dimension line, I see these two dots on the witness line. 
I'll expand the witness line and as I expand it starts showing the three dots. I'll select the middle dot and place it on the brick core face. The witness line is now placed on the core face. I'll repeat this process for the bottom witness line as well. Now the vertical dimension has changed. I'll change it to 4900. I'll now lock the two dimensions and use tr command to trim the two walls and join them. I'll now model the bath and use the same procedure that I used earlier for creating the walls for the bedroom. I'll flip this wall so that the plaster face comes on the inside. And my bath dimensions are 2.4 meter by 1.8 meter. Remember, I'm giving the horizontal dimension first and then the vertical. I'll use TR to trim the walls. I now need to create the other bath wall. But this time, I need to use a 115 thick internal wall that has plaster on both the faces. For this, I'll select the wall tool. From the type selector drop down, I'll select the internal 115 brick wall that has plaster on both the sides and place it horizontally. Now I select this wall and change the dimension to what is required to 1800. I'll trim the bottom wall and create the dressing room here. I now need to create the living room, dining and kitchen space. The dimensions for this are 12 meters by 6 meters. I'll change the vertical dimension to 6M and lock this dimension. I'll flip this wall so that the exposed brick is on the outside face.
I'll create the other vertical wall for the room. The distance here needs to be 12 meters. I'll align the bottom horizontal wall with the bottom wall of the bedroom. For this, I'll select the Align tool from Modify menu, or rather Modify tab. Then select the bottom or the outside face of the horizontal bedroom wall. And then select the living room wall. I'll trim the top outside walls. Now this bedroom wall has plaster only on one side. I need this wall to have plaster on both the sides. So what do I do? I need to change this wall. I'll select the wall and from the type selector, I select 230mm wall that has plaster on both the sides. Also, I need to flip this external living room wall back to where the plaster is on the inside face. I changed this by mistake earlier. When I do this, the bottom wall has moved and is no longer aligned with the bedroom wall. I'll align this again, but this time I lock this alignment. This creates aligned relationship between the walls. We we'll learn more about relationships between elements as we proceed with the project. While the bedroom uh, wall is still selected, I'll also pin this wall so that I don't move it by accident. Now note that part of this living room wall is inside the building and the other part is outside. So this wall needs to be split into two different types of walls. The inside wall needs to have plaster on both the sides while the external wall needs to have plaster only on the inside face and exposed brick on the external face. I'll use split element tool from the modify menu and select this wall here and split into two. I'll use this match type properties tool and select the wall between bath and the bedroom and then click on this between the bedroom and the living room. Now this outside portion of the wall needs to be flipped so that the plaster comes inside. The two walls now need to be aligned. Again I'll use align tool and align the two plaster faces. The length of the external portion of this wall also needs to be adjusted. So I'll move this up a little. Now I'll use Join Geometry tool to join the two walls properly where the plaster finishes merge.
I will now create the other bedroom. For this, I will mirror some of the walls for the first of the first bedroom and the bathroom as well. For this, I will select these walls. Note that the walls that I have selected or the ones, especially the ones that I have not selected. The walls that have not been selected are those that already exist on the other side or will get created when I trim the walls. If I am not careful, this may result in duplicate instances of walls where wall one wall is on top of another wall. And this will affect my model and create whole lot of problems at a later date. I will now select the draw mirror access tool and then draw a vertical mirror line. Note that as I move my cursor along the wall, a midpoint snap indicator appears. As I release my mouse button, the wall gets mirrored. I now have two horizontal walls at the bottom. I only need one of them. So I'll delete this bedroom wall. But when I select this, I see a pin here. I need to unpin and then delete this. I'll now trim the vertical and the horizontal wall. And I'll use the extend tool to extend this wall. Now here also the external portion of the common wall between the bedroom and the living needs to be split and changed. Similar to what I did in the corresponding wall on the other side. I'll switch to 3D view and explore the building masses that I have just created. I will also cut a section and explore the placement of the building blocks further. Using 3D views, sections is, is, an, is an essential part of the architectural design process in Revit where you start exploring your design in various views using 3D views, sections, elevations and so on to explore your design and what you have done. Now here in this section we see the level needs to go down a little bit. But I will do these changes in the next lesson. This concludes the lesson pre preliminary architectural design by creating flow plans using walls in Revit. In the next lesson, we will be refining the model placement and develop the plan a little further. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.